Hi, this is Kurt Johnson doing another Mindful Monday from here at Shawbucks, Jamestown, New York on Chautauqua Lake. Um, very excited. Today I'm releasing my first interview I've ever done or seen myself in a conversation on video. This was done with one of my best friends, Dr. Ken Erickson, PhD, DC, who has a doctorate in health science and philosophy from Lancaster, England. So what I did is in his new uh, lecture room, he had a brand new whiteboard, so I drew up with a circle and the details of what I envision the energy of me is so that he could view that and ask me questions on it. So in the beginning of this video, we're going to try to put a, a, a drawing up that you could take a picture with your phone. So as Ken is referring to this uh, diagram that I drew before our interview, It'll give you a depth to what's going on. So if you have a minute, get your camera ready, take a picture of uh, this diagram and you can use it to follow along as uh, Dr. Erickson and I have a conversation about the energy of me. Just recapping the energy of me, as I believe the energy, the definition is the ability to create motion or movement. And I believe that this is done through the energy of love or fear to create movement. Uh, the me end of it is mindful eatery, which is the three pillars of what we consume, uh, food, thought, and environment. So please like and share this video. We will also post it on YouTube at Kurt B. Johnson. And we're going to put the whole thing out this week in its full form. And uh, thank you guys. Uh, I appreciate it. Have a great week. Hi, this is Kurt Johnson doing a uh, Mindful Monday uh, from a different location. This is a special event for a Mindful Monday. I'm here at uh, my friend, Dr. Ken Erickson's Chiropractic Practice and Wellness Center. And uh, Ken and I are gonna have a conversation about the topics I use on Mindful Mondays. Uh, Ken and I grew up together from elementary school through high school. Uh, we both were tradesmen. At one time, I was a carpenter. He was a union contractor that eventually had uh, 20 employees. Went on from there, Ken became a chiropractor. Along the way, he uh, grabbed a couple national powerlifting titles. Uh, after becoming a chiropractor, he decided to further his education and uh, health science psychology with a doctorate. And... Uh, well, here I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Dr. Ken Erickson. Thanks, Kurt. Um, so the idea about this was for me to kind of interview you a bit so that we can get some things cleared a little bit, I think. Because I've been talking to you, been talking for a while about this stuff. About eight years. About eight years, right. And it's still, it's easy to get confused and it's sometimes difficult to stay. Like, what exactly are you trying to say? So hopefully with this, we can make a little bit clearer, I think, for people. Um, so I'm going to ask you a few questions based on my understanding of what you're saying, and then you can let me know if I'm accurate or not accurate or expand upon it, right? Right. Okay. So this this idea of the Mindful Mondays came out of, uh, if I'm correct, came out of your idea for a mindful eatery. Is that right? That's basically where it started but where it really started was with facebook and kevro okay was wanting me to to do a facebook advertisement with him okay and he said it's about storytelling you're not selling anything right but you're but the so, idea of this came out of a bunch of experiences that you've had in your own life right that led you to this understanding that essentially what we become and how we act and how we're affected in our lives is due in large part to uh, what we consume in right. terms of our foods our and thoughts our thoughts and, our and the environment, right? Yeah, I, I call this the energy of me. Okay, so let's just stick with that for just a minute. Yeah. So the energy of me, if my understand, if I understand you correctly, you're saying that what we're thinking and what, what we basically allow ourselves to be affected by, whether it be our foods or our thoughts or the environment that we're in, ultimately that creates who we are and the quality of life that we have. Is that fair to say that? It, it can attribute to it. Okay. So you've talked a lot in the past about, I hear you say all the time about it's coming from two different energies. 
One is fear and one is love. Correct? Yeah. I mean, that's basically the but essence. They're, they're not, they're, they're viewed as opposite. I'm not even asking you about okay. that yet. Yeah. I just There's wanna, fear and love, two different energies. Two different energies, movement. right. Okay. And that's, that's a definition of energy. Something that creates to create create motion, or motion. Movement. Okay. So from talking with you, my understanding is that your your perspective is that love is kind of our our true essence, that's our center point. Mm-hmm. And that when we're centered in that place, right, then we're going to have we're going to experience joy and inspiration and peace and gratitude and all of those types of emotions. Yes. Okay. And then as things affect us outwardly, externally to ourselves, right, that can start to move off 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 that positive pole. Right. Taking us, not negative in sense of a judgment, but just right. negative in terms of it's getting further away from you the... start feeling discomfort. So the, so the first part of it is I have some discomfort. Right. There's an emotion involved in that, yes? Right. Can you explain a little bit more about what that is, that first, that yeah. first phase or that first I mean, part? The first phase could be, you know, jealousy. It could be uh, embarrassment or whatever. And, you know, you can't feel embarrassment without being afraid of what other people think. So, you know, when a lot of people talk and lecture about fear and love, they just group it in joy, you know, and joy, happiness, love, and it's all grouped in where really I see love, all those things below it are a side effect. Your joy, your mm-hmm. happiness, your abundance, you know, and within fear, you can't, you know, have these other emotions without fear at the top because they're all part of fear, you know, jealousy, feeling guilty. So do you see, so do you see these negative emotions and positive emotions as side effects rather than something under themselves? Yeah. So, so to speak. Yeah. So there's a, there's some essence to us that if we can find that, and it may not even be something that lends itself to language. One of the problems, right. there's a concept I've of... I've been trying some, to say it for a long time, and I don't know if I have the language to well, express what I'm trying right. to say. There's a concept even out there that says that our, the language we speak isn't just a tool that we use to express ourselves. It even determines what we're capable of thinking. True. Right. Yeah. So so often it's ineffable, right? The word in, it means it's, right. I can't express it very easily. Right. It's, but I feel it. Often it's a shared experience, but right. it's difficult to put it into words. Right. But we'll do our best. We'll make our best attempt, right? right? This mm-hmm. isn't so an easy topic. It's a tough topic, right? So what I found, what I find with a lot of these things is if you can slow it down and if we can try to condense it into its essence, mm-hmm. it's better because you've been living with it for a long time and struggling with it and thinking about it and Probably about 40 years. Right. So your whole <laughs> least, life, right? Yeah. Most of your life. Most of my life. And so for you there's probably something that resonates with you. It feels right. You know it's correct. And the difficulty is in the expression of it. Right. So to that end, to that goal, right, we're going to attempt to do something here that makes it clearer for people. Right. So if it's clear for me, then I feel it'll be clear for other people. And and you'll know because we'll have a dialogue back and forth. So this idea that, that... the center, you, you drew a thing that I'm actually looking at later, we'll provide a gr- graphic for, for people. But the center of the, like a bullseye, is love. That's that's the target right. that we're trying to remain and, balanced in. Right. And then as things pull us, external to us, mm-hmm. start to pull us from that, we start have the side effect of that is a lot of negative emotion. Right. I'm starting to feel shame or guilt or, right. and that is really because of the en- the energy of fear Right. Is creating something in me, man. What if I'm wrong? You're what will people you. think of me? Right. Yeah. And that ties in. If I'm if I'm understanding you correctly, to this idea of an ego. Ego has to have something to defend. Or it can't exist. Or I, or it can't an exist. An ego can't exist without fear because it wouldn't have anything to defend. To defend, right? So the further I'm thinking, the, the more I start thinking, or oh, I have to defend this, or I'm not good enough. I'm going to, I feel it like I'm going to be embarrassed or right. there's some type of a, of a negative emotion attached to right. it. If my understanding of what you're talking about is correct, that first, that first phase that you enter into when you're being moved off of love and the real, probably what your true nature is, 
you're going to have an idea about it because you're going to start to experience some of these emotions. Yeah, the discomfort from fear. Right. But the good news, those... if I understand you correctly, right. is that at that point, you're still able to be aware of it. You're still able to make choices to correct for it. Right. Is that true? It is. If, if, if you pay attention to them and you don't ignore them. So those emotions are actually a good thing. to ignore them. Or, yeah, or they are good. it's either ignorance or it's fear that I don't want to know. Right. So you I don't want to ignore face it. it. You don't want to open that Pandora's box. But at that point, so so it seems to me that what you're saying is these negative emotions that people want to avoid are actually useful. Exactly. And it's not a bad thing. It's no, actually a very your friend. It's a, v a very good thing. And right. we can start to if we are conscious of what we're doing, right. we can awaken to this idea that hey, I'm feeling a little anxiety or I'm fe feeling some shame or something. That's actually useful for me. Right. Because at this phase... It's your compass. It's your I, guidance system. It's I'm, your I'm able, right. I'm able to use that as a, way, as a way to go back into my story. Right. Is that, is that pretty accurate? Yeah. Exactly. Right. And then you further went on to tell me that as this expands out, if, I, if, that, if that's allowed to continue in that place of discomfort and negative feelings, if that's allowed to continue further... Eventually, you'll get into this place of disorder and confusion and disorientation, where now it's more like you're being pulled around by it. You're not even right. capable of. You're not in control. You're not in control you're acting, anymore. You're reacting. And you're your acting whole and reacting. Confused. Right. And and that's and a, that's and a, you start having a victim mind where you just uh, can't get out of it, and you get repetitive thinking, and it's stinking thinking and and right. you're caught in a trap that mm. could have been prevented if you dealt with these uh emotions early on but now that it's been it's, right. uh, it's allowed to continue right we actually get to a point where now you're at the effect of it almost right you're being you're being just uh exactly pulled around all over the place right and then of course your reactions to other people's because this is happening within everybody right so once you get an entire... Now, would it be fair to say it's, it, it can actually happen as a culture? The entire culture is thrown into chaos. Yeah. And you're raised in it. Right. Right? You're preconditioned to think a certain way to prepare you for your... So now it has to do... It into, has, and, and I remember... And it could be generational. Right. We'll get to that in a minute because yeah. I have something right. to talk... I no, have I a few do. things to say about that. But one of the things when you were explaining this to me that I thought was interesting was, you know, Wayne Dyer talked about the shift where in the beginning, you know, there's a great lie that's told to kids. And the lie is that who we are at our essence is what we have and what we can do and what our reputation is. Right. Well, if you come from that perspective, you're probably always going to be having some anxiety and some, right. some sense of I'm not good enough. Your ego is always going to try to defend that, right? And it manifests in pretty toxic ways, right? Exactly. Can you talk? Can you talk about your concept of how that's how that's a, a I don't want to say just a negative thing, but how it's a it's a it's a thing that creates a lot of pain and a lot of suffering in the world. Yeah, what you know, what what you resist persists, and the more you try to hang on to something, the more it's fleeting. Mm. You know, just like even with the law of attraction, you know, focus on what you want, not what you don't want. The more you focus on what you don't want, the more you get the same. So if I start seeing myself as a victim. You're going to get more experiences to support that. You're going to get more experiences to support it. And so that even makes your position even stronger and you feel right. validated in it. Right. And you feel like I'm and justified that's, that's in it. That's your identity. That's your ego identity. So everything, but in reality. And from, that's where you feel safe because that's what you're familiar with. Ah, so that's a good point you're making there. So the more you become familiar with it, it's the old devil, the better the devil you know kind of an idea. Right. Right. Even though it's really not you. It's something that's moved you off center. Right. Is that fair? And now it becomes your identity and that's who you are. And any thought of stepping out of that identity Mm. You know, it keeps you even it's entrapment. So then you even have to defend your own victimhood. Right. You and that's a story you keep telling and everyone knows you as that right. person. Right. You know, I could my Texas experience could have been the rest of my life story. Right. You know what I mean? And, mm. and in that moment, I realized that was bad mm. and I didn't want to hang on to how bad that experience was. Right. So I figured if I could learn something out of that experience... It wouldn't be bad. So the only bad experience in life was the one you didn't learn from. Right. It's hard, and it's hard to find gratitude or 
these things on the other side, you know, the love, the compassion, the kindness. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. So let's follow this stream of thought just for a second. Yeah. So we're moving off that center line into a discomfort. We're starting to have these emotions, but from your perspective, that's not a bad thing. It's right. useful. Right. And if we if we can catch it early, there's ways that we can recenter ourselves. Right. Okay. If it's not caught early, then it continues to a point of disorientation. It's chaotic. Now we really are just at the effect of all of it. We're being we're reacting to things. We're not, not causing the we're, effect. We're not causing it. We're not choosing it. Right. It's just happening to us. Right. Now, if that's allowed to continue, then it becomes a chronic state. And that's right. really not good because that's where you start to see a breakdown of the body, a breakdown right. of mental capacity, emotional. Right. Where the medical world might call that disease, a disease state. Right. Where the alternative healthcare model often will we'll call it a, dis, a state of dis-ease. Right. So it discoherent. So we'll get into that yeah, word in a minute. Another, Coherence yeah. and discoherent. But um, if we think of of ease being at ease as being in your center, right? There's really nothing to defend. Right. You don't feel threatened. If somebody says something that that otherwise might have offended you, you don't take it personally. Right. Because you have an understanding that really that's their own trip. Right. That's their own reaction to their life's right. Uh, trials and tribulations, and and ultimately, it's probably a lie that's been told to them. You are what you have. You are what you right. have achieved. Mm -hmm. You are you are what your reputation is. Right. It's you interesting. You have to defend your reputation. And, 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 and when you take people that have been incarcerated, where they don't have anything left other than that, it, it becomes an incredibly important thing. You can't disrespect them. They will not tolerate you. Right. Because they have nothing left. They don't even have their physical freedom. Right. All of their... Objects have been taken. What they have left for the ego to defend is a reputation. And their own identity. In their own identity. That's how their Other, identity, that's where yeah. they see themselves, right? Right. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. Now, once you get into crisis, once it becomes, now, I've always said that the, the what I call white man's medicine, which is, <laughs> I'm sure somebody will, will key <laughs> off of this and say, that's eh, racist. I'm talking about the culture. I'm talking about Western medicine, what people think of as traditional, actual medicine is a useful model when you get to crisis. You and I both had crisis in our lives. Yours yeah. with cancer, mine with a... Right. I had to have a valve replaced in my heart. Or with I trauma. Three crises. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So where you get to physical, the breakdown, that model is useful because we have to do something at that point. Right. It's damage control. We have to keep right. going on some level. Right. From my experience, though, once that's done... That model won't get you back to health. Right. I mean, I was at the Cleveland no. Clinic, and I said to the people there, look, I'm, I'm very thankful you had the skill to replace my valve in my heart. Right. But if I want to be healthy, I feel like I need to get away from you people. Right. And I didn't mean it in a disrespectful manner, right. but no. when you're in that crisis model or that right. disease model, there's really no place to move back to that center that you're talking about. Right. Does that make sense? Right. And and the white medicine's really just seeing everything as mechanical. Yeah, right. Not taking emotion. Well, that's what they said to me. They said to me, your heart's a pump. Your heart's a pump. Right. 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 And your heart's not a pump. Well, it is a pump, I would say, yeah. for sure. But is that all it is? That's the question. And right? I think we're learning it's a lot There's more, more than to that, it than just that, right. Now, beyond that, <clears throat> if that's left unchecked, that third phase the disease state or the where you're chronically in crisis ultimately it's death then you're talking at least death in the physical sense right that if you we don't understand make a correction it, eventually and it could be a redo death it could be you know well then we can talk about that things. at some other point right, right. is but death really the, death the or, three d's moving away from your heart center the first one's discomfort right the second one's disorder where you get confused and, then and the third one's disease. disease and if you don't get yourself realigned you're going to have the fourth and self -centered. which is death yeah right so having said that so so i have a better understanding of that now so the energy of me the mindful eatery right me stands for the mindful eatery right and that's really a term that you're using to say what you're consuming your thoughts your environment and your food, even right, right, right. We all of it that. together, and it all affects us positive and negative. It's it, it's having an effect. Now the judgment right. we place on it is is different. Right. We can choose to see it, just like for example, in that discomfort, the first phase where you're being pulled off your center. Right. 
a lot of people could say, well, that's terrible. You don't want to feel these negative emotions. Right. right. Reject fear. Reject, Reject it. it. But now you're saying what you're... Embrace what else, it. It's got a story to tell. It's, got a, it's your friend, It's actually. going to assist you to realign. Mm. And, and can mm. I mention the battery part? Because I think... Yeah, that, sure. I, my first view of this was that, you know, you had a positive and negative pull. One was positive love and one was negative fear. And so when I was experienced that model when I was 20, it... it kind of made a circuit, you know, love and fear, the outgoing and the return. Mm. So that's basically the metaphor for this is like a you battery. Know, fear and love are like a battery. You need them both to complete a circuit. So what comes up for me when you and say you need that? grounding, you know, ground and earth and you got resistors. I mean, yeah. You so, know what I so mean? what comes up for me when you say that though, is it takes, if I hear positive and negative, there's such a cultural meaning to that. Yeah, I only want bipolar. positive. I only want positive. Right, you want to polarize. I don't want it. negative. Right, no. But in reality, because I used to be, be an electrician, yeah. right? And that's what I mean by coherence. Right, together. It, it's coherent because without that Mary negative and, and negative pole, right. I can't have a circuit. Yeah, or maybe congruence a better word, that there's a, a an understanding of how they work and they work together. So that's, see, to me, that's kind of a profound realization because... We don't want to confuse the la the language can be confusing. Right. If you're if you're looking at it is and I keep saying it the same way, but it's confusing because it hasn't got into a good depth yet. Well, if you're saying if you're using a word and you have an understanding of your intent for that word, Somebody but I'm coming from what, right. So, but, so that's kind of what <laughs> yeah, we're trying to no, do a yep, little bit. Exactly. And I, so if I understand this correctly, you're not really talking about where love is the is the real, only the best thing and you want to complete. Because a lot of authors talk about this now, whereas when right. you and I first started talking about it, right. really not too many people were talking about it. No, not at all. But now it's starting to be talked about a lot. You and Walt Pickett Googled it. Yeah, we looked it up and we couldn't really In find it. In many different ways, there was nothing but now there's But now there's a lot of it. But if what I think is maybe unique in your perspective is you're saying embrace the those other that that's you need that right so that you can come back around it's not right. necessarily something to be avoided and you couldn't right. really avoid it anyways correct right it's going to happen anyway it's going to happen anyways so and if, and if you don't and if you avoid it it's going to manifest later on in something you really don't want mm. it exacerbates it's you know get, and all yeah. of a sudden it's disorder and now you don't have control of it because and then you, all of a sudden because it, you've avoided it right instead of embracing it right so let's go to this next idea for a minute. I think that's I think that at least for me it outlines a lot better what you're trying to achieve with the with the mindful that's Mondays good. and yeah, all of that. That makes me feel better. So I have an idea and I'm gonna say it again. Yeah. We start from this idea of our center is really a place where we're at peace. We don't feel like there's anything to defend. Don't we don't have, have anxiety, we don't have an expectation. Right. Right. I mean, there's a there's a mode in psychology that says the only thing that upsets us is when our expectations aren't met. Right. So at this point, though, we, we could call it a zero point. We could call yeah, it a base no, point. I, right. No, I've written that before. OK. Yeah. When you when you're there, you're really not having any of those those emotions. Correct. Right. You just you're at you peace. Just, you're at bliss. You're just you're at, at bliss. Ecstasy. You're just you're, you're just and you also what's happening around you is not having an no, effect on you. No, you're just in your zone and it's just you're in a You're in a good place. Oh my god, yeah. You're in a good place. Once you start moving away from that because you're you're somehow you're attaching to this other energy, right? Right. right. You're attaching to that and that's pulling you away from your center. Mm -hmm. So now I start feeling that there's some lack of something. Right. And that could be just, through yourself or it could be someone imposing it on you. All right. So I want to talk about that for just a minute. Yeah. So there was a study that was done. I think it was called Fears of the Father, where they looked at, they actually did some classical conditioning with mice and they would um, introduce a smell at the same time they applied a mild shock to their bottom of their paws. And the mice, of course, would react. Well, eventually, and most people know this, all you need to do is introduce the smell. Right. And, and they react as if they'd been, that wasn't groundbreaking, but what was, was they then bred those mice and, um, the offspring had the same reaction. So that's now to the, to the person who doesn't have a background in biology, that might seem like, yeah, of course. Right. But when you understand the biology of what they're saying, right. it's pretty mind blowing. Right. Because what they did is they essentially took the sperm out of the male mice. They only did it with males. They introduced it into the females, and the, the, the mice never connected. They didn't have any connection. So 
to think that that fear, which most of us in neuroscience right. view as a brain state, right. comprised of billions of neurons and probably trillions of connections, all of that somehow was changed and was encapsulated within a single sperm. Right. That is a very profound, I mean, that's really shakes the, the, the foundation of how we understand biology. But if that, if that is true at all in human beings, if there's any truth to that, what you're talking about with this model suggests that the fears of your ancestors going back who knows how many generations right. may have already affected you when you're born, literally. So it's not just what someone said to you. It's not just what you saw on TV or read is it or whatever. Right. There may be a biology to this, right? I mean, yeah. that's really the, the essence of what ep epigenetics I mean, is all about. We, that, we, we could be born into fear. So if we and, are... And we need to learn how to return to love. Okay, so, the, so that's your essence, is it not? It's possible. If we're, so if we're born in fear... Right, we're if, born into we're a... We're born into some it's fearful state. It's human condition. Right. It's been passed on. And we're not given all the tools and understanding how to re return to your center point where you, you can't be So that's the... Off. Okay, so this is the second point. I want to make okay. with you. Yeah. The first point was, what are you trying to say? What's the model? Right. I think we've got, at least I have a better understanding of it. Right. You've if got you these. Do, I'm sure the audience does. We hope, we hope everybody <laughs> yeah. does that. We have these two opposing forces. Right. That pull us and push us. And the one is a very healthy centering kind of energy. And this type of healing. When it you're heals in us. Center. It makes it, we puts, it puts us in a much more peaceful place. Right. right. The other pulls us off balance, not necessarily in a bad way. If we catch it and we pay attention right. to it, it's useful right. because we can use it to come back to center, right. but left unchecked, ultimately right. it can lead to uh, a disease state even. Right. And eventually to death, at least in the physical sense. Right. Yes. So the second point is, what, how does somebody who is in, let's say they're in a disease state, they're in crisis, or they're in disoriented, they're in a, that, that confused state, what do you say in terms of how do we return back to the center? At least how do we begin that journey? Right. And I mean, there's so many factors that play a role. So how can we start with a simple? State. How do we start with a simple one? For somebody who's completely overwhelmed, right? they barely have enough energy right now to even listen to this. Right. And they I, can't go, you know, like, change your whole life, change right. every... I mean, I... I what's, your, what's your suggestion for that? My suggestion first is when you're in that state, more than likely you're not breathing correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, you got shorter breaths, you're not... And to focus on breath takes your focus off of something else. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've never tried this tech... I mean, I've tried many, many different breathing techniques... Mm -hmm. But for the last year, I've been using the Wim Hof method. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's that intense breathing, and and uh, that's had a positive effect. You know what I mean? I think if I was facing in that spot, which I haven't been in a long time since I really nailed down this, mm -hmm. I've taken care of things early on, so I haven't been in the outer limits of uh, right. disease right. or discomfort. Mm -hmm. um, that would be one, but just any, even heart math, you know what I mean? Doing that, the heart So heart math is this thing that you introduced me to, which yeah. is this idea that when you're breathing, your breathing is going to be related to your, to your cardiac function, your heart function. And right. that's tied in also with the brain state. Right. And if you can get yourself into a breathing pattern where you feel calm, you feel balanced. And you feel love, compassion. You feel all of, you're coming from that place. Right. Then what will happen is your physiology will come in phase with that. Right. And so the, the, the heart will come into a different pattern and the right. breathing will come in and your physiology will follow, correct? Yeah. Right. And you, you actually have a device that you can right. watch. Right. But let's say you don't monitor. have any of that fancy stuff. Right. I'm, I'm, a guy, I'm a guy sitting yeah. there at my kitchen table. I mean, you could simply just take, you know, in the beginning when you're really stressed and really discomfort, mm -hmm. you can only go maybe three breaths in and three out. And that's just, even if it's just two breaths in and out. But at least you know, focus in on the breathing. Right. And do it even for three minutes, one minute, whatever it is, just to kind of, just and to it's kind of like a reset. You okay. know what I mean? Just to breathe. Now, another thing that you talked, you showed me, you introduced me to was this idea of tapping. Right. And I was really like, not yeah, too, too, well, you were in a receptive. crisis situation. I was in crisis. So you were like, I'll try anything. You didn't well, really at first, like, I didn't want to try it because I <laughs> right. thought. You're like, okay, Kurt, I'll give you the time. I don't really, but you're <laughs> buddy, okay. And 
you did you did uh, drive me to the Cleveland Clinic and saved my life, so I felt <laughs> like I can give him a little. I'll give him a little bit of time for this nonsense. <laughs> I didn't really want to do it. Yeah. Because in crisis, right. it's really difficult to even To move, do anything. To do no, anything. You're paralyzed. So one of the things that I find is really a problem up. with the self-help movement and everything that people are out there, it takes a lot of energy. You almost right. have to be in a really good place to start it. Right. And I'm I'm of and the... And if you feel good, you should start it now because that way when you're in crisis... Yeah, but that, you'll be well, that's a judgment that we're, again, yeah. putting on somebody. No, you, I what know. you should I do, did. right? Yeah. But what I'm, saying is, what I'm saying is if you're in crisis, where right. I was, I'm, I want to be able to... And I think, you're, I think what you did for me is useful. That's why I want to share it. Yeah. It was something that even if you're in crisis and you don't feel like you can do anything, you can at least tap. Right. You can start doing these tapping, right? Yeah. And now we don't. I don't think we want to get into all the complications. That might be for a future. No, talk tapping about. solutions is a great place to go. So for tapping, right? If tapping is a, right. That. If you're interested in it, and it, and it, and for me, between doing the heart math and the tapping, that really brought me out of crisis. Right. So that was. I mean, from a lived experience viewpoint, in a person, and I'm that, naturally very skeptical. Right. It it really was something that was powerful for me. Yeah, so, I remember when we first went through it, we did your heart, and then you're like, oh, wait, wait, I feel this. And then we tapped on that, and you're like, okay, I do feel a change. There's something here. And then you actually read the book, and you said that was more information well, than I the video. Well, I read the book, and then you I did watched your the video, research, and, and I started research. Yeah. So we could do a whole talk on that if right. we wanted to at some point. But what I'm saying is when you're in crisis, right. breathing seems to be one of the most critical. Anything to distract you. You know what I Bring, mean? You focus shift, on your, your, shift your focus. Right. Tapping. Can now, the other thing it. for me that was really useful was music. Music was critical in those. Because right. I had had open heart surgery. I wasn't able. I couldn't even hardly walk across the room. Right. I had to relearn how to breathe again. And right. I wasn't in a position where I could do much. Right. I could tap. Right. I could do the heart math. I could watch a monitor. It was a guided meditation. Right. And I could listen to music. And that changed my emotional state tremendously. Yeah, no, that's, and that's something anyone can do even in crisis. Even in crisis. You know, so, yeah. So now let's say we get you out of crisis. And you're starting to get some traction. Yeah, you're starting to build up a little inertia here, going back, we're getting some right. traction. So now we've talked a little bit about how what moves us away from the center into right. crisis. Now I want to talk about how we get back. So, so, so the, in crisis, we've talked about it a little bit, right? Breathing right. or music. Right. Or even the food you eat, yes? Yeah, so with the food you eat, it's a good point because I never realized how much food affected me and affected my mood. And now my quote, and I don't know if it's mine or someone else's, your diet of food precedes your mood. Mm -hmm. And it's easier said than done, but I think there's so many foods that, you know, there, there's no... Um, there's no control over, you know, the dyes and the colors and the food additives and... And a lot of these patents are owned by the pharmaceutical Well, let's not even companies. go there yet. Let's yeah, not okay. even go there yet. But how, I about, mean, how about just but sugar? Eating, how about just sugar? Yeah, sugar is a huge thing. I mean, I mean, we're not even talking about the genetic modified this or the no, just sugar and how much. But of I mean, the just American whole foods. Diet. What I the point I wanted to make is just whole food, actual food, something. Yeah, not that, processed, not fake food, not fake. Food. You know what I mean? Something I that came out of the ground this and, way. And or, sugar is the most thing that's going to imbalance you. It affects your immune system. Right. With all these crises we're facing, mm. you want to stay away from sugar and processed foods. Yeah. Anything in a box. Now, here's eat. something you said to me a long time ago that I thought was really good, too. Because when you're in crisis, and not just in crisis, I find this with people who want to work out or they want to do something. And they're like, look, I'm so far gone. And I'm never going to be able to commit to working out right. six days a week. And I can't uh, go on this, you know, perfect vegetative or ve uh, vegan diet with right. it's all organic. And right. so what's the point of even doing it? Right. A lot of times. Right. People, but you said one time to me, look, if you even changed one meal, right. you've made a, th a third of an improvement. I mean, no, you've made a big improvement. I, that's what I just one day I just came up with that idea and and just thought, well, if I just change breakfast. Right. And just had oranges and something that, you know, real food, avocados and yes. you know something to get me. And then the rest of the meals don't worry about. I mean, that's a mm -hmm. that's a. 33% improvement. Right. And everybody, I think, has the ability to change one meal a day 
To be so no home. matter where you're at, no matter if you're in crisis or not, yeah, somehow, some way, you can start making a small change. Yeah, through absolutely. your breathing, through your food. Right. Right. And and so you said food, thought, and environment. So let's talk about that part of it for a minute. All right. I find that people. It's interesting now we're going through what we're going through and we're supposed to have all this distancing and we're breaking it now because we're this close. But human beings aren't designed to be isolated. Right. I don't believe that's part of our nature. No, not at all. Right. So the environment that we're in, though, can be very toxic to us if we're surrounding. What I find with people who are of that victim mentality that you talked about. Right. Now they identify as a victim and they want to be around other people who identify themselves as you victims. you got a shared interest. You have a shared interest. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And the ego gets satisfied by that. Oh, yeah. Right? We're yeah. getting more and more evidence. Right. One and, of the most and brilliant. And it actually feels good to find someone that's a victim, too, because now you can expand on your victimhood. Yes. but It it's, can grow just like, just like anything something else. good or something bad can grow can either grow, way. Right. So if I want to make a change and move myself more towards that healthy center, then I have to really be, be cautious with what I... My environment, not only the physical people I'm around, but what right. I, social media or, right. I mean, I find the news is amazingly negative. Right. And there's so much to, to be aware of in our environment. I mean, this is a huge, deep topic, topic. Right. but you know, the EMFs, the electric made frequencies, things, right. and they're in, in your house and you're in your house and now you got your cell phone going. So let me say, you got your cable box, I get that, but and here, then you got all the negative But here's what triggers me media. when you say that. What triggers me when I hear that is, yeah. I'm not going to get rid of my cable and my computer. Computers no, and my life, so, and we have so to hell with it. No, I what's know. the point of it? I might right. as well just throw Give it in. <laughs> and that's what I find with people often is, and they don't want to change. Well, they get defeated because they're like, "Look, I can't just turn around." And if right. I make a little change, what's the point? It's not enough. Right. It's not going to make. A but my wife anymore. actually changed her whole working out one day a week, literally one day a week. Right. Now she started making changes, diet and everything else. Right. Totally changed herself. Right. One day a week. And, you know, in my way of thinking, small, little How much little time, time is she? Is it a half an hour or 20 minutes? It's intense, 15 though, right? minutes at first. 15 minutes. 15 it's, minutes, and maybe. it's intense, though. Now, it's not easy. Now, at first, right. you celebrate the fact you show up. Right. The fact you even showed up to do it. No, that's is a huge. It's huge. And then the fact, even, I had an old friend of mine, Dr. Kinsella, who I did my clinical training under, who said, even the worst workout you ever had in your life was fantastic. And I never could get my head around that until I woke up in the ICU with tubes coming out of my chest. Right. I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand. And I thought to myself, take the worst workout I ever had right. in my life. Yeah. Think of how absolutely amazing that was. And that's an empowering thought at it that was a, moment. It was tremendous. Because it's too it, bad you got to be in that situation. <laughs> right. So hopefully <laughs> people can hear this yeah. and say... And it, see, the, the and problem is, well, that gets back to that judgment thing. Right. Why is why isn't it good enough? Why just showing up and doing a very light, easy right. work? Why is that not good enough? Because right. you live in some judgment that says that's not good enough. Right. And what else isn't good enough in your life? Right. And have you been listening to this year after year after year? Right. Nothing's ever good enough. I mean, so many times I tried to make change and I tried to do it all at once. And I could do it for a short period of time, but it was never... Something you could you could embrace for a long yeah. period of time. And is I that think, because of cultural conditioning, do you think? I think so. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you're too skinny, you're too this. And then, you know, you have, a, here's have a, some ice cream. Here's another this, judgment. Have a cookie. Here's another judgment. You know, are, what are we going to eat as a fit? I've ran, I've run into that even in my own experience with other chiropractors because I have my doctor, my PhD, right? Right. That was a personal journey for me. That was my own personal right. It wasn't because I thought, well, I'm not smart enough with my chiropractic. You know, I wanted to expand, but... It's amazing how, how I've been judged by that. Like, People will say, oh, well, what, you know, you've got this other degree. Oh, well, you must be, you know. Yeah. And I'm thinking that really has nothing to do with anything. I didn't do it. It was my own personal journey. You it was didn't a do challenge. It for a trophy. I didn't do it so I could show, <laughs> say to somebody else, yeah. I'm smarter than you. You Look know, at my wall. And it's the same thing <laughs> if somebody loses a bunch of weight and then their friends are like, huh, who do you think you are now? Or, right. So that judgment that you're talking about is a pretty right. toxic... Right, the shame, the guilt. That's a toxic... Know, that can and, be incredible. And they're just toxic. acting out of fear because... All right, now that brings jealousy. me to the third point. Okay. That brings me to the third point. We had the first point, and I'm going to lose track of these no. things. The first point was the idea that we have this center and we're pulled off of it. Right. By fear. Right. Right? And then um, the second point was that if it's left unchecked, it'll eventually lead to a breakdown, crisis, disease... And even death, it didn't even kill you. Right. 
But getting back there, coming back, we can make small changes, yes? Right. Small changes. With our diet of food. Just breathing. Breathing, yeah, just breathe. Simplest thing. Most essential thing you need to do. The simplest thing. Just slow incremental changes can lead to big consistent changes over time. Consistent but here's the third point was, what one of those profound things I got of what you were saying was, if I am out there and I am being judged, now I've done something, like I've got a degree, another degree, or maybe I've lost 20 pounds, or and then people are judging me. Right. It was a challenge for me not to get mad about it and not to feel right. like, listen, you know, and now I have something to defend it's again, right? But when <laughs> yeah. we talked earlier before we started this and you said, you know, once you get to that center point again, you can see that what they're doing is just a reaction from fear. Right. It's nothing personal. Right. It's just they're reacting because they have a fear that they're not good enough. Right. Or they're not living up to somebody's expectation or whatever. Right. Is that? That's very correct. And, and when I started realizing that, I call it the forgiveness of fear. Forgiving the fear that gave rise to the action. So if so I can't take it personally, so if I can't forgive attach. the action, right? I just can't, <laughs> right? But no. if I could forgive the f realize the fear that, they, that caused the action, they acted out of some type of a fear. Yeah, it's kind of like Teflon; it can't stick to you. You don't hold it. You're not seeking revenge. You don't mm. get angry right away. Mm. You know what I mean? And and that's to me one of the most toxic emotions you're gonna yeah. have. Yeah, and I, I just and and. Uh, you know, I kind of just forgive myself of my fears as I forgive those who have feared against me. Yeah, right. That was just so empowering and so centering. Mm. And, you know, you, we all have egos, We, you know, and that's what we're shedding. Mm. We come in born into a fear-based society with an ego shell. And the more that shell gets released, the more we get to our center. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and and the more you can forgive the fear, the more you can stay centered. And so if someone won't wrong you or, or harms you in some way, if they were in their true center, if they were coming from that place we started talking about originally, yeah. they re there re really is no reason to harm anyone or talk badly about anybody or no. any of that. No, right? it all comes back to you if you do. You know, well, even if it didn't come back to you. Yeah. Even if it didn't. Right. Right? Even if, no. it, if, if you said, I can do it and not be unscathed, there really right. there wouldn't be the motivation. Right. If I feel good about who I am and where I'm at in life, right. Um, I'm fine with letting you be who you are. You don't have to make someone else feel small so, so you can feel bigger about yourself. Right. So if you're experiencing that, if somebody's bad mouthing you online, say they're online writing bad things right. about you, or they're gossiping about you, or they're whatever, they're, there's some judgment is being placed on you. Right. It's really not about you. No. It's really about where they're about them. Right. Some fear they have, some inadequacies they've got, yeah. something. And, and if it really stirs something up within you, it's the mirror effect. You know, there's you still have some of that fear to digest and release, mm. and it's being shown to you. So if I, if I feel it stirring something up in me, from what, if I understand what you're saying accurately, I could actually see that as an opportunity yes. to correct right. something inside myself. Right. Yeah, because if it pisses you off that someone else is doing, there's probably that misalignment within yourself or it wouldn't upset you. Mm. I have something to defend still. Right. And if I didn't, right. what would I care? Right. Without fear, you wouldn't have anything to defend. You know, in the martial <laughs> arts world, which I was involved with for a long time, right. I found that people who were really secure, I mean, really top pros, a lot of times just weren't too bothered by, you know, some guy going up to him and challenging him in a fight. It was right. not a big deal to those guys. No. Because they didn't have any question about whether or not they could handle it. Right. But in the in the for the average person walking around, right. it can be a very, very big deal. A very big deal that I'm being challenged now. And and the other thing is if you're constantly wanting to prove yourself right. and say what you can do and what you couldn't do and you know what I did, and I did this, and I did it. And it's funny because a lot of people talk to me about that, how much they used to lift or, right. you know, um, we've talked about this before. Yeah. And for me, I'm at a point in my life where I'm like, yeah, you know, nothing could be less important to me. Right. It just doesn't matter. I mean, it's fine. Right. I think it's okay if you still want to compete or do whatever you're doing. Yeah. And there was a time where I lived for that, but right. not not where I'm at now. Your motivations it, changed. It changed, yeah. and uh, I don't have any attachment to it, so... I don't much care. Like it's right. it's okay if you want to. Sometimes I am irritated, though. I have to say, no, I get I'm like, irritated. I don't want to. I don't want to hear again how great you are. Right. When I get irritated, it's time to stop, look, and listen. 
You know what I mean? And just see. So if you find that irritation coming up. It's in an opportunity. In, it's, okay, so how do, you, how do you suggest people in your model, this mind, energy of me, right. and mindful leader, all that, how do you suggest they deal with that when they feel that irritation? Because I still struggle with that a lot. Right. I deal with a lot of people and a lot of things, and, I'm, and right. I get irritated. And some days I feel good. Right. Some days I, so from your perspective, the days I'm feeling good right. and balanced and I'm not affected, then I'm more to my center, yes? Right. And that's how I start my day centered before I even leave the house. Sometimes it's an hour, two hours. You try to find I that I want place. to find that center where when how do you I go do out it? and I how do, you do it? how do you actually do it? Um, I start out with doing a meditation series, like okay. call it like a reconnection. And, okay. and I'll do a Wim Hof breathing for 15 minutes some days now that that's my part of my new routine. All right. I'll take a cold shower for three to five minutes just to let my ego know who's boss, okay. that I'm in charge. Uh -huh. This is uncomfortable, but it gives me my first experience of overcoming discomfort by taking the and cold you're, and shower. You're, and you're choosing it. And I'm choosing it. Right. I had a and, guy, I heard a guy recently. And after a couple minutes, I feel steam's coming off of me. I heard body. a guy recently say he got up early, earlier than he wanted to every morning for the same reason. Yeah. To let his ego know that he's in charge. Yeah, no. and I can do this if I choose to do it. Yeah, so I, I create one accomplishment at a time. Gotcha. And it started simple. Like when I was in crisis just coming out, um, I heard someone say, you know, the first thing you should do every day is make your bed. Mm -hmm. So you accomplish one thing. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be that, but it could just be, and it doesn't have to be this whole grand old hour, two hour thing. I mean, right. it starts with one minute, two minutes. Yeah. And then... You start, you start desiring more of that, more of that center, and next thing you know, your whole day goes for you. Mm. People are calling you, you're not calling them, mm. and if all of a sudden you accomplish so much, and in the days that you're stressed, and you're fighting, and you're pushing forward, right. you work your ass off, and nothing gets so done. So when you get to that place that you're talking about, does it feel, it's more of like you're being just drawn along, you're not having to push and fight and struggle yeah, all the time? Yeah, and, and you're just kind of taking one step at a time, and okay, a I gotta of, do this, I And do it's this. more of a natural thing, you just yeah. feel like it's a flow? Yeah, and all of a sudden you're not mm -hmm. multitasking, you're just yeah. in the moment doing one thing, and all of a sudden something yeah. shows up, and now it's time to do this, so you do that, and then you go back, but the day's kind of planned for you in a way. It's a weird thing. Yeah, I, I've got a problem. I've heard a lot of self-help people lately say, you know, you get what you fight for in this world. And, you, yeah, and there's no. all of this, you have to go for, you know, all of that. And I'm like, but that's not sustainable. No, I think, and, you know, I, I am a cancer survivor. I went through the whole chemo thing. And I personally believe if you fight cancer, it's not the healthiest thing. Mm. What you resist persists. If... If you're more focused on the outcome of where you're going to be, that that keeps your mind off of the cancer so it doesn't keep growing, I think. Mm. You know you, you know your destiny. And, and a lot of times in life, like, I don't know if this is a good point for this idea, but I uh, saw Greg Braden once, and he was talking about a destination from the earth to the moon and how the ship's got to constantly correct. Most of the you time it's off puff course. Of air. Right, yeah. right. So I look at fear as that way. So if you have a course or a destiny and you're following that course and all of a sudden you're tipping off the line, you get that um, so a little discomfort right. and then you make a correction and you realign right. with your path. Mm -hmm. Well, you could also go past that discomfort. Now you're in disorder yes. and now the ship's getting off and further off course right. and it takes a lot bigger boost of air yes. to get back to alignment right. so you don't cross over. Yeah. And there's a whole timing, and yes. so there's a whole balance thing. If yes. you're if you're not just looking at a circle, right. you're looking at a destination. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how I view fear. It's a correction. It's the little burst of air mm -hmm. that realigns you to your path. Or, is the fear the the correction, or is it your response to the fear that's the correction? I think it's the recognition, the awareness. Now, if I recognize it, but I don't do anything to change it, you're going to keep going. So the correction it has to be something that I choose to do. Life is, yeah, life is absolutely choice. Right. You, you choose to recognize it, and then you choose to realize you're off. Now the let's line say, and now it, see, even that feels like a judgment. I know. Because let's say somebody said, "Look, I didn't choose to do this." Right. I didn't right. choose this. Right. Is it, it? How does somebody approach it who doesn't even know? Like they're so completely in chaos and just like I had a lady the other day come in whose daughter just died. 
and died of an OD. Oh. And I can't say to her, no. well, nothing is good or bad unless you believe it is. I mean, so uh, what I found in my own practice is I don't look at people as something to be fixed any longer. I look at something, I look at them more from the perspective I just want to understand them and then give them a place they're not judged in whatever <laughs> they're doing. That's, that's the... And, yeah, I, and I think huge. that's healing. I think that just to have a place to go right. for a minute where someone's not telling you you did it wrong. Right. And now you need to do, the, you know, right. to be a bit gentler with the whole thing. You're and, not prodding them with shame. The fear is Yeah, stuff. I had a, Dr. Kinsella would never let me even use the word around him, right? He was just like, he had, and I couldn't get it early on. But I had right. some young chiropractors not too long ago was asking me, you know, how do you be successful? I mean, we're struggling. I said, do you shame your patients? And they said, no, we don't shame. I said, well, do you tell them they should lose weight? Well, yeah. Do you tell Do you tell them they should have come early? Should have come early. Should have dealt with this when yeah. you first started. Right. Right. Do, you right. should. You should this. You, I said, you're shaming. You're making them feel. Right. They already know. Anyways. Right. They live in it. And that's a negative movement. You're trying to control their lives for them. You know mm. your expectations. Right. Kind of thing. And I that, find this true even with a lot of chiropractors. A lot of chiropractors are putting videos out now where they're doing these real dynamic adjustments and. And I started doing a lot of that, but now I tell people most of the time I say, I want it, I'm going to make a suggestion and we're going to see if your body's open to it. You know? No, I, I want to, yeah. I want to see, I want to make your body feel it's, it's idea, not me right. forcing something to happen and it changes their whole state. Right. So keeping with that mindset, if people are in crisis and they've had all the shame and all the guilt. You don't want to make a big adjustment right away. So a little yeah. adjustment is enough. Right. Even if it's one meal. Right. Or even if it's portion. Like, right. say, don't even change what you're eating. Right. Try to eat, maybe leave a little bit. Right. It's enough to start, right? But, you know, certain packaged foods is going to make you feel like you've never full. It's designed that right. way. Right, but you let's say, I mean? let's so say you, that I'm you in. You can't eat a portion. And all right, feel so like when I hear that, you know what I hear? To I hell with it. What, what's even? Why Kurt even said. Bother? Kurt said these foods are going to make right. me not. I'm a victim again. Right. From the food company. Oh yeah. What the hell? I don't even. To, to hell with it. No, I. You see what my And point? I feel that way too. I <laughs> make my Oreo cookies. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I had a lady come in a little <laughs> while ago who ate a whole pie, and she's very obese, and she was just beside herself. And I said, "Here's the thing. Um, I want you. How'd you feel when you ate that pie?" And she goes, "Terrible." I said, "How'd you feel? I want you to go home, and I want you to have another piece of pie." That's what I want you to do. Except only eat the pie. Don't eat the shame and the guilt. Ah, yeah. Right? I'm consuming, yeah. Because I said, it's, how long have you been overweight my whole life? I said, and how long have people been shaming you about my right. whole life? And when you had that one piece, didn't you feel right. shit? I sh so what the hell? Might as well eat the whole pie. Right. No, right? You don't have to. Don't consume the guilt and right. the shame. Right. Just eat the cookie or eat, right. the, eat it. Enjoy, Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Right. But you'll find you only need one after right. that. I don't need to eat the whole the whole thing. Right. Right? Because that's the shame I mean, just doing the shame that. from being a cigarette smoker is almost maybe as bad as just smoking itself. I've said, we've had that conversation many too. Many times. I've told people, just smoke. Don't smoke the shame along with it. Right. <laughs> no, because they're, they're, it's now incredibly you're double, toxic. double damage. It's incredibly toxic. So if you're in crisis, so that, getting back, mm -hmm. which is really my, my understanding of why you do these mindful uh, Mondays, is to give people a little tidbit maybe that they can use right. to go back. Right? To find right. their way back a little bit. Right. And and to actually, even if you're in a good state, you can understand what takes you off that right. state. Oh, yeah. Right. That's but if you're point. in the outer edge, you know, just the simplest thing can, right. can assist you, you know? Right. Well, I think we, I think this has been good for me. Oh, it's been I, great I think, for me. So to, to say it again, to recap it, you you have this idea that who we are in terms of our true nature is really... We use the word love, but not in a romantic it's been sense. It's so misused. It's been so misused. It We're in a have place, conditions. maybe a better word for some people might be a joyful place, a peaceful right. place, yeah. a centered place, right? A place of compassion, kindness. All you know, of it's that. easier to talk about the side effects of love than to actually talk about the get love. It, right. You know, I love my car, I love this, and you get so distracted about. Well, I'm pretty clear that Delivered. love is love is different than an addiction. If you're in a, if you're addicted right. to something for how it can make you feel, right. you're not really loving that. I, I heard and if someone, you have to pr protect your position, right? It's probably when you not. really have a love of someone or something. You know, it's I really have your best interest at heart, yes. irregardless of if I'm yeah. being benefited. Think from you're it. a child or your dog. Yeah, right, <laughs> you know? right. 
Um, so if that's our center place, and then our environment, what we consume in terms of our food, our thought, even our environment around us, that all plays a role and conspires to pull us off of the center. Right. It can. It can. It's potentially. If one of those pillars is off balance, food, then, thought, and environment. Then it throws you off. Yeah. Right. Now, if I have the, the emotions that come with that, those are like the side effects of that, yes? Right. The fear, the jealousy, embarrassment. It's all coming from some lack of some sort. I'm lacking in some way. I feel ashamed. I'm not good enough or whatever it is. Right. Or I feel angry. Right. Um, you're saying that if you notice that early, right. you can use that useful. You can use it right. to start to shift your attention back to. Right. And one of the ways you can do that is to realize those things that are triggering that in you really aren't about you. It's about what's happening in the other person, and it, and it's about how you take it. So you if know? you so, but if I but if I can forget, if I can say, look, it's some fearful thing or some lack in them right. that's triggering this behavior, right? And I don't take that personally. It's much easier for me to forgive right. it and move back to that center. Right? Is that fair? Is yeah. That, right. Agreed. Definitely. Okay. So then, um, once you get yourself back in the center, the final point I want to touch on with you is that you said the more you stay there, the more you nur nurture it and feed it, right. it expands. Right. That Your base that center. starts to expand, and so it becomes more difficult to move you off the center. Right. You're not easily upset no. because somebody cut you off in traffic or right. they and said something nasty to you or right. you're not taking it so personally. No. You just absorb it and go with it. Embrace it. and It's not a problem for you. It's part of your circuit now. It's, not, it's just part You've of your circuit. You've made love and fear congruent. You don't you know, see it as one together. thing to be avoided and one thing to be right. held on to. No. You see it as a natural, you break, you a natural it. flowing current of right. of how life just is. Right. It's the ebb and flow. You don't need you don't need to feel like you have to yeah. hoard the one. And no. well, you can see what happens in current thing with with what's happening. People are hoarding everything, and that's fear right. of lack. Right. Right. There's not going to be enough. Right. So we got to hoard everything, and you know, and people who are even buying it up and selling it for a profit. Because right. there's not going to be any other way to make money. Right. We're going into crisis. Right. You know, I look at it as a great, fantastic opportunity for this because what a better time to do this. Right. And even if you're sitting home and you're alone and you're whatever, breathe. Right. Come back to even some in, center even place. Out, you know, count in, count out. So you've got the ebb and the flow, the, the positive right. and the negative, the in, the, all the When exhale. people get anxious and they feel threatened or whatever, they often will hold their back. There's a whole posture to it and they hold right. it. Just like you said with a child, you right. know. Yeah, we're born knowing how to do this. Yeah. In martial arts, we used to say, I would ask the question, why do we train? What's the purpose? Right. And the answer is, for we have to train for what doesn't come naturally. Right. I don't need to teach you to grab hold of something. Right. But to learn how to let go of it. Right. Just <laughs> like the monkeys grabbing the... That's how they catch them. They, right. won't, they won't let go of the yeah. banana in the bottle. They just go pick the thing up. Right. And how much are we holding on to? How much in our lives are Man, we actually why? holding on to? And it's killing us, literally. Right. Literally. Yeah. On a literal sense, it's killing us. Totally. So what this is, a lot of your mindful eatery and mindful is really about how to let go. Right. How to yeah. let go of those right. negative emotions and yeah. how to move back to center. Right. And try to, you know, not leave expectations and not create a debt when you help someone. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so if I'm helping you from a place of love, true love, not... Right. You said one time, you said that when I, when you do that, that doesn't create a debt. Right. That then has to be repaid. Right. I suffer from that a lot. Right. I feel like I'm here to help you. Right. In fact, if you're good to me one, I'll right. be good to you 10. Right. But if you harm me one. I'll harm you. Well, my old you would be, I'll, I'll harm you 10. The new enlightened me would say, I won't do anything, but right. I'm sure not going to help you. Right. <laughs> Right? Right. Just be lucky I'm not harming you. That's kind right. of where I... Yeah. But th what you're talking about is an idea that says, I, I it doesn't create a debt. I'm happy to do it because it makes me right. feel good. And, and I is have that... a feeling in my heart it gets paid forward, whether it's from you or one uh, of your friends. It just keeps moving forward. So like, as long as I'm in I that... I was there for you, and now this morning we had that text conversation. Right. It's it's getting paid forward. It's I mean, paid it was forward. An so that's another profound thing. To thing. See 
how that that didn't create debt. Mm -hmm. I didn't hold you. You didn't expect anything no. to give back to me, and I didn't expect anything from you. Right. And you're just automatically, yeah. without even thinking about it, right. you're giving that return without a debt to a yes. close friend of yours. Yes. It's yeah. pretty cool how that cycle it's works. It's a really profound concept that I think we maybe we should wrap it up with is this idea that I'm going to do it anyways because it'll 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 benefit me in some way. It doesn't have to come back from you. I don't right. even need it from you. No. I'll do it anyways. It's a hard thing for me. That's one of the biggest challenges of my life. No, it, it's for everyone. Yeah, that's everyone walks around with a spreadsheet. <laughs> we're you keeping, know what I mean? Keep, I used yeah. to feel like I had a notebook. Yeah. If I kicked your ass, let me, you're on the, yeah, I got you scheduled for next Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. wait. Right. Right. And if it's not a physical kind of a thing, it's some way. And it, and you know, the thing about that is it'll ruin your life, ruin the quality of your life. Just oh, completely. Totally. And everyone and I don't, else around you. And everyone, they and don't I don't, fold irregardless of how much money you might have. Right. What kind of house you live in. Right. Or don't live, what kind of car you, it won't matter. No. When you're coming from that place all right. the time, it's toxic. Well, you know, you look at a lot of you know, millionaires and billionaires, they're still motivated by lack and limitation. They've still, got a billion dollars still. and they don't feel that's enough. Still. You know, and then later on, they, you know, they, all of a sudden they come back and realize it. Wow. You know, maybe they don't realize Maybe it. they never do. Maybe they get a do-over and they have to come back and live again <laughs> to figure it out. Right. But yeah, there, there's still that driving force, a lack and limitation mm. that's fear-based Mm -hmm. And it looks successful, but it's really very self-punishing and self-fulfilling. Yeah, see, that's another you live an empty thing. life on top. What of looks it. successful can actually be self-punishing and empty. Yeah, I had a guy once tell me everything that you own owns you. Oh yeah, I and you're fully, trapped by it. You're literally in. I live by. It. I mean, I I, I know that. You've experienced I don't, it. Yeah, yeah, I've had a lot. I don't. You know, I'm doing okay, but I don't really want a lot. There's so much to maintain, and right. everything you own owns you, and it owns your time. And you know, when I was working out as a young guy, we had a we had this. Uh, everybody was kind of it was a joyous thing, and we competed with each other. But if you were going for your best lift, or we'd cheer you on. I mean, it was a right. it was an amazing thing to feel like I'm doing it, not from a forceful thing. Right. From a joyous place. And then you get into the world and it feels like you're pushing and you're fighting and you have to make it happen. But you guys were working hard back then. Oh, well, too. so probably the hardest I ever worked. And someone outside would look, oh my God, them guys are nuts. They're working hard, but it didn't feel like that. No, it work. felt like a joyful thing. It was amazing kind of a... Yeah. I talked to a person yesterday who was part of that crowd and she was saying it was just unbelievable. you know. And so to me, if you're talking about being centered, it's not about just sitting around and doing nothing. Right. You may you may achieve even more. Right. But you're achieving it not in service to your ego. Right. Which says I have to defend. Right. There's never enough. I know I got a billion dollars, but that guy's got fifty billion dollars. Right. It's saying I have a passion for it. Right. It's not even. It's yeah. It's I'm working hard, but I'm. It's almost like I'm being drawn into right. it. Right. Which is a which is a very healthy place to live. I think. And that's a nice place to work from. We're all searching for that. You know, I'm finding it. I'm getting closer. I want to change and Got it. and do more of the mindful eatery project and develop that out. But you know, that's where my passion is. You know, right. and at one time it was to you know go out and drink and build. So I build a right. bar, and I went from that <laughs> point, and that was a lot of fun. But you know, you have kids, and you so evolve as you go through your life, you want to you're, you're constantly change. evolving. Everything's constant change. Right. Just because I said something ten or twenty years ago doesn't mean I'm that same right place. You know, I always find right today's wrong tomorrow, and what's wrong tomorrow's right the next. I find day. it interesting that well, people say, well, he reversed himself. Right. Well, I would hope. God bless them. Yeah, I would hope. That's good. <laughs> yeah. If you if you get an insight or something and you don't see it the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else that we didn't touch on, Kirk? You know, with the consuming your thoughts, you know, you're consuming words and they're negative or positively charged. You know, so they call it the stinking thinking. And once you get into that pattern and you're in the outer edge, it's it's hard to come off of that or even realize, mm. you know, and think about how many times you've said something about to yourself that you wouldn't even say to your worst enemy. Mm. I'm not capable. I'm an idiot. I'm a jerk. And, you know, that becomes your mantra and that becomes your reality. Mm. And that, that's a point with, you know, consuming thoughts mm. that it's really hard to change and even love yourself. That's, you know, when you muscle test and do con th that type of thing, mm -hmm. most people are going to fail mm -hmm. when they say, I deeply love and accept yeah. myself. When I had to do that with the tapping, 
Yeah. Oof. No, and that's it painful. It didn't and then, feel good. No, and I mean, I grew up, my dad, the first time he said he loved that he loved me mm. was when I had ridden my motorcycle all the way to Dallas, Texas when I was 18. <laughs> that was the first time, and I was like, well, we love you. I was like, never heard that before. Mm. So, I mean, we're Swedish. It's not, you know, like the Italian families, they're close or tight, right, right. huggy, lovey. And, right. And for us, you know, we just never said I love you much right. growing up. No, right. And it's uncomfortable to love yourself or even, you know, it's like you first think it's selfish. And yes. you know, once you get through that initial tap, I deep, deeply and completely <laughs> right. love and accept myself. It really, you just feel this of lifting. Mm. And all of a sudden you're filled with this heart warm energy and mm. and you are you don't feel the shame and guilt that you can love yourself. But for but it seems if you've grown up with that, if that's been your identity, it's uncomfortable. Even though you'd think you'd want yeah. to go to that place. Right. It's so foreign to you. Oh, it is. You don't want it's it. It's uncharted territory. Mm. You but know. do it any you said to me, do it anyways. Right. Basically. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, I know. Just do it anyways. <laughs> right. And I thought, well, what the hell do I got to look? I mean, right, I yeah. couldn't be any more miserable. No. You know why I did it? Because I was making my wife. You're... I was making my wife miserable, man. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a hard one. No, it that's is. That's a hard one for me. I don't want my wife to be miserable. You know, I don't want my kids to be miserable. So I thought, here comes Kurt with his nonsense. I don't want, you know. I know. <laughs> I need something real, right? right? But at the Cleveland Clinic, they wanted to drug me. They said, well, we've got a great psychiatrist. Can help you with anxiety, depression, but I don't oh, want to be God. drugged. I said, I don't want to be drugged. And the guy literally is turning away. Right. And I'm like, where are you going? Right. Well, if you don't want medical treatment, is if you refuse medical treatment. He said, if you refuse medical treatment. The only treatment you can give me is a pill. And that's when I said, look, I'm glad you could do it. What you did, but if right. I want to be healthy, I got to I got to get away. Right. So when you came to me with this idea of tapping, I'm like, "Well, look, I got to do something because it's killing it. the people I love. It's right. killing the people that I care about, and I didn't want that. I didn't want it with my kids. You know, I think the thing I'm hoping people, if they listen to this, this isn't something we just sat around and you made up. And I've just we've lived it. Right. Both of us have gone through it. And we grew up in similar families, very similar, similar very town. similar culture, very similar family. Mm -hmm. And when you get to a point where you feel like you don't have any ability to change, I mean, that is a dark place, man. That's why I stopped judging people for whatever they did, right. even if they committed suicide. I'm right. like, I hear it all the time. Well, that's the most uh, selfish, selfish thing, thing you could. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it. But at the same time, who am I to judge this person's no. pain? That you're in, and I found when I stopped judging, a lot of the a lot of the pain got lifted off of me. No, that's I, true. Because because I now when I fall back in, and I do. Right. No, we all. Do. You know what happens? Right. All those bad thoughts come up again. But now you have the quicker. Length, there's the quicker at least awareness. there's a way I can go back. Right. I can go back. At least and start you can going back it early. It, much you earlier know, now. Just even be. You know, I catch myself being sarcastic and making fun of someone because I don't like their behavior and I'm hoping it'll change their behavior. Right. Right. And then I realize that, oh my God, I'm trying to create their behavior by shaming and guilting them mm. and by embarrassing them so that they'll behave the way I think is appropriate. Mm. And that, that'll come back to haunt me eventually in the you know, immediate future, and it does. Right. Maybe it's because I expect it to. Now, is there a time that you think some people are just so toxic there's, and it's so dangerous and, and it's harming you that you just have to eliminate those people out of your life? Yeah, I do. I mean, I'll, I'll try to avoid, you know what I mean? I do at times. You know what I mean? And, I mean, to me, what my problem, some, of my, some of my problem with the self-help movement and the field yeah. the, is it's all wonderful and it's all beautiful, but... I've lived enough life to know yeah. it's not always. And there are people that are so damaged out there right. that I think you have to separate. If no, you... I won't seek them. And the more I'm in a higher energy, the more they avoid me. Oh. I'll see them in a grocery That's store. A and, if I'm, and if I'm in my solid and my heart base is really big, they don't touch you. Know, you. I'll see them out of the corner of my eye. And, oh, man, he looks too happy. I can't deal with that. <laughs> Look at, he's smiling. I don't want to talk to someone that's I happy. See. Right. And they just kind of, on their own. You don't have to force that no, to happen. No, but if they do come upon me, I take it as a spiritual practice that, you know, I want to stay centered. Mm -hmm. They're giving me a challenge. If I'm discomfort, I know I'm going to grow for it, from mm -hmm. it. You know, any bad experience in my life I've had eventually, 
I found some compassion, kindness, gratitude, some little light of something to pull me back I, forward. I think it's, we might have started this out when you, we talked about the, the early concept in martial arts that the duality of life, that up is down and backwards is forwards. And, yeah. You know, for every crisis, there's a blessing. Yeah. And vice versa. Yeah. You there's know, a lot of truth. I think there's a lot of truth, but you have to at least keep yourself in a place where you can feel that potential. If you can't see that at all, there might not be any recovery for you. No. And people do. I and mean, there are, not everybody comes out of this. Not everybody right. makes it. No. You know, no, I, and they, they bring their families down with them without I just heard standing a, up and, and listening mm, to some wackadoodle come well, over and tapping <laughs> with you. you know? Well, I knew, I knew. <laughs> see, the thing about this is I want people to understand is for you, I've known you a long time and we've talked, a lo this is a result of a lot, a lot of talks. Right. But your heart was pure. I knew your intention was pure. And sometimes that's all you need. You don't need, somebody might think, well, that guy's not an expert. He's not a doctor or he doesn't have, you know, he's not, it doesn't make a difference really. Right. Because now I would say also, I do think there's a lot of nonsense that's, you know, everybody wants to glam on to the next guru and the next, right. and, and this is the new thing. And all you have to do is follow me and you do it for a while. And next thing you know, well, I got to go to the next seminar because I'm, I'm, right. I got to get my next fix. Right. You know, but I'm saying that sometimes the most, uh, the, the people who save you can come in the, the most unexpected forms it doesn't have oh, to be yeah. some expert from afar no. or some, it can just be a very simple thing. And that's why with you, I mean, I was bad enough that I knew I either had to, to do something or I wasn't going to come out of it. There was, it was. So when people, if someone's listening to this and they hear it, like I got pretty emotional. I wasn't expecting that today at all. Because I'm pretty, right. I feel pretty balanced about the whole oh, thing. Oh, I know. But, but it gets me still. And if you are in that place, when they listen to your Mindful Mondays, hopefully this gives them a context now. It's not you just talking some, right. hey, if you want to be happy all week, you yeah. got to start on Monday. If Isn't you choose that? to be happy, yeah. life is choice. Right, so it's just choice. But it going, is choice. <laughs> but you have to at least get to a place where you're capable of making the choice. Right. And you might not be able, you know, we talked one time about- what your options are. And we, right. No, we don't, and we talked one time about frequencies. If I'm at this yeah. frequency, if I'm at 88.1 and I want to get to 106 point, or, you know, right. I can't get there in one right. massive jump. Right. Right. I have to be able to go through, right. but the very next movement I make is one thing closer to the, where I want to be. Right. right. Yeah. But I got to focus in on that. I can't just constantly, because if it's an un, unreasonable thing, I can't just change everything in my life immediately. No. I can't do it. There's no right. possibility. And I have no support. What do you say about that too? There's no support system. I don't have anyone supporting me. My wife, not not me, but I'm saying the person right. out there who goes, I don't have a single person. I might be in jail. I might be imprisoned. I might be, and if I'm not physically incarcerated, I may be incarcerated in my own. Maybe I'm in a job that I can't escape from and I hate and I'm in a relationship I don't like. I mean, you, uh, where do you begin? You know, a lot of this reflects to yourself. I love the quote Eleanor Roosevelt made, you know, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Mm. And I've taken that to you, no one can make you feel disrespected without your consent. Mm. And if you can make those change and still be in a harsh environment, you can still show up to work with a different attitude and it'll change your world. Mm. I remember, you know, building bridges and I was up in Buffalo and it was freezing cold in Niagara Falls and I hated work, you know, and all of a sudden it was cold and you could only be outside and your fingers were sticking to the metal and it was just not comfortable. I didn't want to be there. Mm. And then I left on the way home. I said, man, I don't want to be working a job that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm wishing my life away. Right. I'm looking forward to three o'clock or three thirty driving home, mm -hmm. you know. So even if in your workplace, if you can take some of these understandings, you can make it a happier place even for yourself. Mm where you're not, people aren't annoying you all of a sudden. And, right. and now you start appreciating that you have a job and you start using those things and you recognize your coworkers that are trying to shame and guilt you and, and you just forgive them right so, away so you're not holding on so to the that. So in practical terms, if you're in a bad place, having that realization that what they're doing isn't really personal. It's like something you taught me in martial arts. Not that I took a lot of classes <laughs> with you, yeah. but... Uh, 
you had me down and, and you said, it's it's not you moving me, you're moving yourself. Right. There's something on that. Well, yeah, because say I'm say somebody's pinned me and I can't move or what, I'm right. not going to try to force them to move. Right. I'm going to try to move myself around right. them. Or, and there's another concept that says still is still moving. Right. Which means you might not feel you can move. Right. Your heart's still beating. And that applies you're still breathing. to this. So, it, so what yeah. you're saying is you can do something. There's some change. Right. Some little... And one There's of always them, an opportunity in every so crisis. one of those opportunities is to say the people that are really around me doing negative things or I can forgive that if I can see that coming from a place of fear that they're doing it out. Yeah, of. I can forgive that and, fear. And, and, yep, and you don't take it personally. And then I don't. So that just an energy. so that gives me a little bit of a wedge. Right. I can I can get a little you, bit of a wedge in that. You crack a little daylight. A little bit of daylight, and that's yeah. enough sometimes, right? Just right. to get started. No, yeah, and and you feel just a tiny little twitch shift. And then another thing, it seems that that's a useful practical thing, is trying to even though it sucks and it's whatever. What can I be grateful for? See, it's easier for me to be grateful now. Right, but when you were sitting in the chair, well, when I when, when I, I stopped over, bef that day. well, before I before I had open heart surgery, you take so much for granted, even though you don't think you do. Right, breathing. I mean, I went for a walk with my son uh, after that little while, and he said, "Dad, what do you like most about nature?" I said, "The air, breathing." Yeah, you know, just being a simple thing. I mean. No. Before, if I wasn't breaking a record in the weight room or if I wasn't, right, didn't get my next belt promotion and whatever, I mean, if I wasn't submitting, whatever I was doing, right. if I didn't get my next degree, if I didn't, I just didn't feel fulfilled. Right. But now I'm so grateful sometimes just to be able to sit and do this, no, just to be able to do it. So if, no matter where you're at, there's something to be grateful it for. It just really sucks that we have to go into such a crisis to appreciate the little things. I've but said that too. Once you come out the other side of it, yes, it's it's a whole new world. Well, I wish that I would have had something like this that we're creating here. However, you decide to right. whatever you decide to do with this, or we, <laughs> or you and I together. <laughs> yeah. However, it looks that works out because I think if somebody has, if if they can take what we've gone through, right. And learn and be benefited. I don't have to go touch the stove if the guy says, "See, it's hot." It's like the shop yeah. teacher that right. only had like this many fingers. I'm telling you, right. this thing will cut your fingers off. Be careful. Right. He knew because he'd right. been he'd been there. You know, and fear is kind of like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If fear creates that discomfort, if that chair just got 220 degrees, you'll probably get up and move. <laughs> right. You know, when you get backed up against a wall, yes. all of a sudden you're in crisis. You're about to die. Whatever's happening, all of a sudden you just go, "Ah, screw it." I got to move. I got to move. I don't care. And all of a sudden they heal. There's mm -hmm. something, you know, something, something triggers, big change. Right. Or maybe all of a sudden you, you start having uh, more positive thinking and, and are consuming better. So wouldn't thoughts. it be nice for somebody to be able to do a change before they get to that that point yeah. where they just don't, they have to move. Right. It's so uncomfortable. Wouldn't well, it be nice it to, be. to be able to do it before it ends up at that place? But I would say, and if it, and if you can't, and you have to be in that place, that's okay. It is because that's okay. That's your path, right? The, you know, the, one of the things for me is I've I've learned to let other people have their own journey. I can't control that. No, me too. I have to control my own journey. I used to learn something when I'd buy twenty books and give them out to everyone because <laughs> they had to learn it with me. You yes, know what I mean? Right. Now, you know, it's there if they I ask did that me recently. if I have the opportunity. Right. You know. If it's if you if you if it feels right and you think you're yeah. good, I that's how I approach practice. I offer a service. If you yeah. find it's of value, I think it's great. Right. And if you don't, I'm begging you, please don't come to me anymore. Right. You don't need that here, and they don't need that. No, and I, please go and aggravate somebody else. I don't. Right. It's it's fine. Yeah. In fact, I'm very glad. Right. Not you know because if it's not a fit, I don't want to force it. It's okay. Right. It's fine. It does it doesn't matter. And I think there's an act too of actually them purchasing the book means more than someone giving it to you. Mm. I think you're more likely to read the book if you I purchase wonder. it yourself. I wonder because I've had people give know. me things, and I, I for me, I almost valued it more. I I've actually, had people. Yeah. I've had people give no. me things like a book or. And said, "Look, this meant and it was so powerful for me. Yeah, but it, you have to be in a place where you where you can see the value of it, right? Yeah. When my dad died, uh, one of my friends' wives gave me a Florence Shim book. Yeah, your word is your wand. And you it gave it to me. Books. Yeah. Yes. But I mean, that just and that was here's the whole law of it. I mean, this book was written a hundred years ago. Yeah. And it's so profoundly true today. A lot of the the sayings. I mean, one yeah. of our first conversations when we first got together." 
and I told you I wanted to write a book and that, right. you know, and, and Tim Desmond was the one that said, hey, you got to talk to Kenny. Right. I've heard him mention Bruce Lifton before right. and right. and I connected and you, the first thing you said was, uh, why do you want to write a book? Everything's already been said. And then you paused and I thought, oh yeah, that's true. And you said, yeah, but it hasn't been said by you. Right. So now all of a sudden I felt free to say anything. Right. Because it's already been said. Even if I say it wrong, it's already well, been said Well, my first wrong. martial arts, <laughs> my, one of my very first martial arts instructors, Jay D'Amato, used to say, if it's good, you'll see it again. Yeah. Right? I like that, yeah. No matter who, what art. Right. No matter who's, you'll see it again. Right. It'll come around again. Because some of this is passed on through the ages. Right. You know, and I, I, I use a, music as a, as a big... Um, and that uh, something that I can relate to. And we were talking earlier about it. Well, you know, if I said to a musician, every note's already been played, man. Right. <laughs> you no, know, it's it's true. Yeah. But not by you. Right. Right? No. And the other thing when we were first getting together that meant a lot that let me know that I wasn't too far off base mm -hmm. with a fear and love creating movement. Um, you said if you want to an ancient martial arts thing was if you want to seek revenge dig two graves yeah. you know what i mean and that's what it does when yeah you that's, hang a, that's on a, a that famous energy. that's a famous uh, yeah what an idea if you as soon as you set out to get yeah make sure you start yeah. by digging two graves but how it's true the same, is that oh it's usually true it's the same thing with uh with um resentment or revenge it's like drinking poison hoping it kills the other guy right or you picking know? up a hot coal to throw it at someone and you're burning yourself you're yeah. the one getting burnt you're the one that is something, I mean, I don't think this idea is new. No, but no, it's ancient. It's ancient, and, and it's hung around for so long because it's and, been true for so many people. it's still applicable today. Oh, yeah, and will be forever. Right. And then the other one I really liked that, that you know, when we were first talking was about the, the samurai. Oh, yeah. And his, tell that one. About, is, that, is that the one where the guy was going to kill the guy? Is that the well, one? Or yeah, because one? He, his, uh, his master his got master, assassinated. His master was assassinated, so... The, the story said, basically, the person was duty-bound to revenge the death. It was nothing personal. Right. It was just... That's he, your job. It, it was his honor. That was the code right. of Bushido. He had to do it. And he drew his sword to kill this guy, and the guy spit right in his face, and he put his sword back, and he left. And I always told my students, you know, I, I tell them the story, I said, why do you think he did it? And they had all kinds of ideas, but the reason was as the story went, at that point he became angry at the guy. And had he killed him at that point, it would have been out of personal revenge and because he was so angry. But then he loses who he is. He's no longer in control of his life. He's at the effect of his life. He's at the effect of his emotions. And the, and the part of having that code of the Bushido was not to live a life like that. It was to live a life on a higher plane. Right. So he couldn't kill the guy at that because it, it would, would be for the wrong, be for the wrong reason. Master well, and it'd be for the wrong reason. It'd be yeah. it would disrespect his code. It would right. it wouldn't and it's not who he wanted to be. He wanted right. to be in control right. of who he was and be the choice maker, you know. Right. Um you're not in control if you react like we just talked right. about. Right. No, this this whole talk was on that and was I think basically, that's kind of, Yeah, so that's that's the story with that. Right. Was I can't You want to stay in center. I want to stay in center. And you know, you could you could argue, well, it's wrong never to kill anybody. We never should okay. But that's another conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Right? That's another conversation. They didn't see the samurai in that culture didn't see that as an end anyways. Right. They they saw they were very destiny uh, based. They, it was their honor. It was my honor to do it. Right. And and it um my and and there's a great movie where the Last Samurai, where you know Tom Cruise is captured, and in it, this he's talking about um, Custer, you know, his last stand, and right. he took a small number of people against a huge number of Indians and got slaughtered, and and the guy said, uh, "I think this is a good death." The samurai said that, and he goes, "Well, maybe you can have one just like it someday." And he goes, "If it's my destiny," right. because they felt like there was they were part of a bigger whole, right? And you can't. Con I'm not here to control. You know, if I'm if I'm floating in the river, I'm not here to control the river, or the rocks, right. the air. I mean, I'm part of it. Right. It's back to your idea of coherence again. Right. Connected. Everything. I'm connected, connected, and it's. I'm not here. My ego isn't here to say. Right. When I die. Right. And when I don't die, you know. Right. And when I was doing my doctoral work, you know, I did some uh, looking at some of the more, uh, um, like. Uh, 
like the Native Americans used to have sings for, towards somebody's end, and the idea was to heal them, not to, not to continue their physical life, but to heal the relationships. And it was a celebrate, but it was about healing, right. even though they were going to die physically. We don't see it. We've right. got people who are languishing they're right. part, they're, they're, through a machine is keeping the pulse. Keep, we're so fearful of it that we, we, we act in very terrible ways to each other right. because of that. And, you know, some, I think some of the more, the, the wisdom of the ages teaches us to not be so fearful. Right. You know, not to be so fearful. And then you're more in control and you're in that center place that you talk about. But unfortunately, too much of our attention is taken away from these things. We're bombarded by fear. Everything Everything's fear. fear everything, everything. Everything. Our society, our new, the, the news is the fear factory. All of it. If you want to get more of the same, watch the news. Right. You know, it's right. all the same thing. Well, the news, the Getting, media, I mean, you, yeah, you name it. The it's stock market's fear-based. And they even talk about it. I mean, they don't... Yeah deny that it's no not, no no they embrace you it know, completely and it's 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 constantly going up and down just based on people's fears sure you know what if we could i don't know it's a topic for another day be great right. we'll keep going well are we do, do you feel like we've covered a good at least a yeah good, you feel you got a better understanding i have a much better i have a much better yeah i think i think i have a much better understanding of it now, and i think sure. when i use the word coherence or congruent i mean it means even like your left and right half brain you know, you're seeing as something as a, as an orchestrated whole that functions together. Yeah. As opposed to something that we artificially Congru fragment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because we human like, beings love to draw lines and make borders. Right. And, and create and, and create yeah, polarities and boundaries and polarities. Right. And, I'll so have it's kind of a unipolar idea. Yeah. You know what I mean? With love and fear working together. You don't see apart. it as uh as two as two completely opposite. Your right and left hemisphere, your brains working right. together. You know. I explain that to people about their bodies all the time. Yeah. Well, was it this side or was it that side? And I'll say, well, if a brick in the wall was turned, which side is out? That it's side hard. or this side? <laughs> Yeah. Right. We right. have to see it as one right. functional unit. Right. But yeah, I think I'm. I think this has been really helpful for me. I appreciate you taking the time because no it's, I hate to give things in segments, and I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over, and I am, but it's not as clear, and it's not been challenged or that you know taken to a deeper. Well, point. we talked about the idea that you know there's this concept out there that, and I can't tell you who originally said it, but you know I don't know what I know until I've said it to you. Till I've yeah, turned, right. Yeah, that was the point of this talk. That was kind of the point of this. So as we have a dialogue, and I'll I'll leave you with this little thought too. I I tried to come into this with the idea of having a dialogue with you and not a discussion because right. a discussion often is I'm going to if I'm very polite I'll sit quietly while you're done talking and then I'll straighten you out about what, what you should have said. Well, what, what I think you were trying to say was, yeah. right. I know someone that did that. We, once. yes, we do. And, <laughs> and the thing about that is, is I'm not really open to what you're saying. I'm not really. Right. So I came into this more of a, from the perspective of having a dialogue, right. Where, where I, if I think I know what you're saying, I want to make sure I want to check with you. Right. But the interesting part when you do that is, by being challenged sometimes, you might even say, you know what? I wasn't as clear as I thought I was on that. No. And by saying yeah. it back to me, right. it clarifies it for you as well. Right. And I think if more people could get into a dialogue, right. there would be a lot more um, benefit in, in having what we typically call a conversation. Right. There'd be a lot more benefit. But most of us are there to defend our point. I'm right. here to I'm here to show you how smart I am and why I'm right, right and why you're wrong. Right. And like we talked about earlier with your dad, if he questioned it, it was over. No, that's it. I'm done. It's over. There's no. We're not going anywhere. I question everything. Yeah. It's, and that's the end of it. Right. Well, I think people live in that place. Right. Just like when the guy said to me, "Well, if you're gonna," I asked a couple questions to the to a doctor, and he said, "Well, if you're gonna question me, why you even ask me?" I said, "Well, I can't get three of you to agree for one thing." Right. Right, <laughs> right, right. There's two two different centers have different protocol. I mean, right. Now I want your advice and your in your suggestion. They're not in the business of giving suggestions. They're in the business of giving orders. That was statin drugs. Well, it was one hospital. No, it was or... a blood thinner. Well, okay. they wanted me on a blood thinner yeah. after I have. A, and I looked it up and I looked at the research and right. I said, you know, there's no evidence this helps. And the and the heart head of the vascular out there said that's true. So I said, insurance card, company. well, I didn't even deal with that, yet. but I said, to the, so I said to the cardiologist, well, why would you want me on it if there's no evidence that it helps? And he goes, it's a good idea. I said, and, and where you were before right. the other center, 
which was like the Mayo Clinic, or it was a major. He right. said, we would have had you on it there. <laughs> so now you want to ask me why I question you. Right. Why I wonder. Right. Yeah, are you telling me the best thing? Right. I think it's a healthy thing. And I think if somebody who's secure in that, people that question me all the time, and I said, look, I'm going to give you my best advice. And this right. is what I think. Now, if it turns out wrong, I'll be happy to say, you know what? I, I changed my thought on it. I appreciate it because I think we both learn and we both. It's a much know. better way, but you have to get to that center point you talked about. Right. If you're out here where everything is, is off balancing you yeah. and you feel every, every it challenge. Fight and flight. Yeah. I have to, I have to, what do you mean you're, I've got, did you see the wall? I got, I got degrees. I got, yeah. you know, I mean, I, tr I took all those degrees to Starbucks and tried right. to buy a coffee with them. <laughs> Nothing. Right. So, you know, <laughs> yep. it's not going to work for that. Right. It's not going to work for that. Well, I uh, I appreciate you letting me. No, this know, is huge. Let me let me have. Uh, I want to do this. We'll keep. Maybe we'll do keep some more. It. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Kurt. Thank you. All right, buddy. I don't know how long we went. Long time. I felt like. But that was just ten minutes, right? Yeah.